Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. This video covers two topics that I'm going to kind of use together, starting out with uh, redirection of output in Linux. So um, first thing I want to do is if I do a command like IPA or IP address, I can see what my IP address information is. If I want to output that to a file, I can run the same command and I can use uh, the redirection, the arrow, and give it a file name. So I'm going to call this um, IP address.txt. And if you notice, I don't see anything come to the screen. All I see is that the command completed. If I want to see what's in that file, that's a file I just created, I can do cat IP address.txt, and it's the exact same output that I just created. So the first time I ran that, I just ran the command and it displayed on the screen. This is what displayed when I ran that command. The second time I ran it, I directed it to a file and then I showed the output of the file. Might not seem that useful in this case, but what if I wanted to save this information for future use? I can save it to a file. If I were to change the IP address now, um, it would and I ran the command, it would show the new IP address, but I could always have this as a reference. I could give it a, give the file a different name. I could give it a different, uh, a name based on the date. So I could, I could even rename this one if I wanted IP address and put a date on this. And I could say it's uh, Jan 01, whatever. Um, that's not how that works. I do IP address text to the new name. And now if I do an LS, I will see that I have the new name here and it's the IP address as of January 1st. It's not January 1st, but that's what I put there. So if I wanted to run that command again, I could run IPA, that's a shorter version of it, output that, and I'm gonna use my new name, IP address January 1st. And again, I don't see anything happen, but if I cat the file, Nothing has changed, but we just see one listing there. We see the listing we saw. What if I wanted to add to that file every time? What if I wanted to say IP address.txt is, or IP address gen 01 are all of the addresses. I'll run this command every day to get an address every day. And I want to just keep adding to this one file. Well, in that case, instead of using a single arrow, I can use a double arrow. And that is called append. Instead of replace or replacing the contents of the file, I'm adding to it. I'm appending the end of the file. So I do that. And now if I do cat IP address, it shows more stuff. It shows the original one I created. And then if you notice right here, it shows the second time I ran the command. And if I want the file to be really long, I can just keep I can do that and that and that and that and that. And now if I do, instead of cat, I'm gonna do less, just so we can see it a little bit easier because it's a fairly long file at this point. And I can just keep scrolling down and you see that this, it just repeats and repeats. I'm putting the same information in there so it's not that valuable, but just being aware that you can append the end of a file and maybe it would be valuable. Maybe I'd put something in there, maybe a date separator or something. So. If I wanted to, let's uh, Q to get out of there, I could say date and date will just show me today's date, which is actually not, as I said, not January 1st. So I'm gonna do date and I'm gonna put that at the end of the IP address. And then I'll do another, uh, let's see, another IPA. And if I do less on the file, and I go down to the bottom of it, we can see where I ran the date right here, and then I ran the command again. So it just keeps adding to it and adding to it. And that can be really, really useful depending on what we're doing. So um, just to restate now, if I go back to my original command that I ran, right there where I have a single arrow, IPA single arrow, and I run it, and then I do less on the, on 
the file, everything's gone. It will overwrite everything because that's the way the single arrow works. So which one you want to use really depends on what you're trying to do. There's nothing to scroll around here. So if I just want it to write it once, that's fine. Um, I might want to see what the listing is of a directory. I might want to ls-la on etc and then I want to put that into a file. And then I'm gonna grab that file and do something with it. Fire, file list. And then I can look at cat, file list. Control, uh, let's get out of that. Let's try that again without the typo. Now I have this file list that has that directory listing. And I can go in and I can look at it. I can open it up in another file. I can do whatever I want with this. This is not a real directory listing. This is the directory listing that was put into the file. So I have this to work with. If I want to get a daily update to the file and maybe every week I want to archive it, I can then I could do the I could do this and again I can use the double arrow set. Anything I can put to the screen, I can redirect either to a file. Now if there's an error message, um, with this with the arrows if i were to say remove a space and it's going to produce an error it puts the error onto the screen it doesn't put it into the file and there are other options that will put it into the file there are options that will display both let's say i wanted to do something and i want to dis display both to the screen so ls dash la and let's say i wanted to uh, do a directory usr Bin and I want to actually view the file, view the output, but also put it into a file. And I'm going to do um, a pipe, which is a, the vertical line, and the T command. And then I can put that into new file list. Now I saw everything on the screen. Now if I go back and cat new file list, I see exactly the same thing. I see on the screen, uh, I see in the file what I saw on the screen. There's a big long file, so there's a lot of stuff to look at, but it was just a repeat of what was in the file. And we can do a lot of other things here. We could append this if we wanted to. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of redirection options we can do. One place this is really handy, I've used it with uh, copying files, so I can both see the progress of a large co file copy, but also store the results to make sure I have um, a record of what got copied. Um, let's say I wanted to install something. Uh, I'm gonna do apt get install, and I'm gonna install a program called John. And I can't really tell you what that is um, because Google got mad at me for sharing information about that. I'll tell my students another time, but rest of YouTube, sorry. So I'm gonna do installed results and possibly spell part of it correct, .txt. Uh, so now I need to put in my password because I used sudo. And now it's actually going through and trying to do an install. I'll do a yes on that. And I see the progress of the install. I can see that, yeah, it's making progress and it's installing stuff. Um, and in just a minute, the installation should complete. Okay, it's complete. So let's look at that results, cat installed results, and we see everything we saw. So if there's an error, we would see it oh, going back too far. It's easier to use less for this, less installed results. Um, and we can see the installation happen, or we can see how the installation happened. So everything's there, everything's done. Um, and that's redirection, really a useful thing in Linux. It's something that when you need it, it's really the best way to do something. Um, you can get even more specific. You can uh, just output portions. You can use programs like grep, which we'll get to later on, and, and whatever we're looking for, we can find it and we can send it out to um, either a file or the screen or both or you know some combination depending on what's happening. So next thing we want to look at is processes. 
So let's clear everything. First thing I want to do is, is look at the processes that are running in this um, terminal. And if I do PS, I can see that I have bash running. That's, my, that's the shell. And I have PS running because I just ran that. Now, if I wanted to see everything running under my user, I could do PSX. And that shows a lot more running. This is everything running under the user. And we have um, a lot going on because I have the graphical environment running. I, I logged into, uh, into Ubuntu and I have the graphical environment. So it's all of that stuff running. This is very similar to a task manager in Windows. So uh, what I do now, and you know, you look at it, we have sound running, we have a printer driver, print engine running, we have, you know, GNOME, uh, calendar, all kinds of stuff running because the desktop is running. If we had no nothing graphical running, then it would be a much smaller list of things, uh, a much smaller list of processes. So since I want to just stick with what's running in the terminal, that's what I'm going to look at. One other thing we can do is we can use a, a command called top. And this is going to show us what's, what processes are running and it actually gives us some, some usage information. So we can see processes running, how much CPU, how much memory. Um, we can see overall what's being used on the, on the whole computer. So this gives us a little more information. And as you notice, it's dynamic. So things change. If I were to launch Firefox in the background, um, we'll actually see that happen and we'll see it use, oh, let's, let's get this back in the front. Uh, we can see Firefox using up CPU resources and memory, um, and that just hopped to the top of the list. So I can get rid of that right now, and we are back to um, where it was. It's you can note you notice Firefox took a little time to close. So top will show us a lot of information as well. If I want to get out of top, I can do Q, and that gets out of top. I also could do. Uh, see, I'm back in top. I can do control C. That'll cancel it and get us out. So that's how we look at processes, or that's one way we can look at processes. So let's say I have a process running in the in my terminal. Uh, I can do something like I'm going to ping prof A, and it it's in the host file to localhost. So just pinging myself. Um, I can't really do anything. Now I'm gonna combine it with something I did before. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna do ping A, ping prof A, and I'm going to redirect that and append it to a file. And I'll call it ping out. And now it's running. But I can't do anything. I have uh, this flashing cursor, I can type things, I can try to quit, I can do anything. I could control C, but that stops my ping. Maybe I don't wanna stop my ping. What I can do is actually I can do control Z and that will pause things. So it says stopped, but it's actually just paused. I can resume that because I can do BG. When I do BG, it moves that process to the background. If I do PS now, I will see that I have a ping running on in this terminal. Um, I can do jobs and I can see that that ping is running. If I do LS dash LA on ping out, I see that I can see the size of that ping. If I repeat that command, I can see that a few seconds later it is bigger. And a few seconds after that, it's it's bigger. So this file is getting bigger. The file is getting more results added to it. And if you remember what the ping command looks like, it just it's this is what's going into the file. These lines again and again and again. Um, so and there's another one where it's bigger. So this ping is still running. I've moved it to the background. I can type commands. I can clear stuff. I can do stuff. I can, you know, I can do whatever I want in the terminal. Uh, if I want to bring it back to the foreground, all I need to know is what job number it is. And in this case, it's the only one running in the background. So it's one. So if I want to bring it to the foreground again, where it was up here, I just do FG one. Now I have this command back in the foreground. And if I were to look at it, I could open another window, but it's still continuing the ping, it's still continuing to grow. So if I wanna stop that, the way you stop a ping is Control C. Now I'm back here, 
I can repeat that LS ping out and you can see that just the time I was talking, it got a lot bigger. So it, it can be really helpful to move uh, tasks to the foreground and background when you need to do things, you're in the middle typing something. So let's say I wanted to uh, not cancel a process, but I needed to, I just, I, I need, I can't do it with control C for whatever reason, or it's something running that, that won't respond to that, or I, I need to just kill the process. We saw that when I do PSX, there's a lot of stuff running. Something hangs and is not responding. Something's, there's some problem somewhere, and I need to uh, kill a process. Again, like Task Manager in Windows, if I want to end a process, I can use the kill command. But first, let's create a process for me to kill. I will do the ping prof A, direct that to ping 2, and now it's running and I will do control Z and pause it and then do BG, move it to the background. And if we wanna see the uh, status of the file, I'll do this and um, LSLA on ping two. And we can see it's 960 right now and I run it again, it's 1158. So it, it's growing as expected. Now let's say I want to just kill a process, I don't want to bring it to the foreground, whatever, I can't bring it to the foreground, something's going on, I need to just kill a process. What I need is this process ID, in this case 3777. So I'm going to do kill dash nine three seven seven seven. I hit enter and I'll give it another enter and it'll say, hey, that, that process got killed. If I do PS again, I don't have that ping running anymore. If I do ls la on ping two, it's 2874. And if I repeat the command, it's still 2874. The ping uh, command got killed and it's not running anymore. So now that file is no longer getting bigger. Uh, so that's killing a process. And we can kill other processes and I can make, if I look at PSX, um, I could kill any of these processes and potentially make the system unstable. Uh, if I needed to kill one of these processes, it's likely it would be unstable to begin with. If I wanted to um, PS and I could kill da dash nine, my bash shell, 1865, and there goes my terminal. It just died because I killed the shell. So. Uh, if I want it back, I just have to launch a new terminal. There were any seconds now. Now I have a new terminal. If I look, I, knew I have new processes running in this terminal. So that's two topics that I kind of use together, redirection and, and processes. That's how they work. Um, obviously, we can go a lot deeper into both of them. This is just an initial explanation of, of how they work and what you can do with them. So. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.